American fighter of the sixth generation, the Russians are lagging. One would expect the United States, the country that was the first to create a fifth-generation fighter, many features of which are still unsurpassed, to take the lead in the development of a sixth-generation fighter. Several factors are pushing Washington towards this. The United States is used to being the undisputed leader in combat aviation and would hardly cede this place to anyone willingly. And the second factor stems from the first. They're certainly not giving up leadership to Russia, with which, after the latter attacked Ukraine, they completely fell apart. They went not even to zero, but one might say to minus. So what has the U.S. done in terms of developing a sixth-generation fighter jet? Would you like to know about it? Then sit back and we'll begin. In general, from the point of view of common sense, there's no hurry with the sixth generation. After all, the history of fifth-generation fighters has only just begun. At the same time, the U.S. and its allies already operate 750 units of F-35, which is far from revealing its potential, as evidenced by the launch program to upgrade it. In addition, the Pentagon has 186 F-22s exclusively. And the Russians can counteract all of this with only four or five of their fifth-generation fighters, Su-57, while the Chinese have slightly more than 150 units. But this is still much less than the West has. So why force the work on the sixth generation now? At the end of the video, we'll try to explain this very intriguing question, and our conclusions will be somewhat frightening. In the meantime, let's talk in detail about the American sixth generation fighter jet. The Pentagon is forcing its creation. In September 2020, Will Roper, Assistant Secretary of the U.S. Air Force for Acquisition, Technology, and Logistics, said the following. We've already built a full-scale prototype and done a full demonstration flight, and we've broken every possible record in that regard. For Russians, such words as full-scale demonstration flight and breaking all possible records are equal to getting clubbed on the head, if not a good slap in the face for sure. And while the Russians are recovering from it, let us tell you what's known about this prototype. It was created as part of the American program Next Generation Air Dominance, or NGAD for short, the first thing we need to say is there is very little information about the plane, which is generally understandable given the extremely high level of secrecy. So what is known today? With a high degree of probability, we can see the appearance of this prototype. In February 2020, that is before Will Roper's announcement, Aviation Week editor Steve Tremble reported that Lockheed Martin showed footage of the sixth generation fighter at the Air Warfare Symposium 2020 event in Orlando. The illustration shows an unusual type of integral layout aircraft with features of a flying wing and tailless wing. The machine has a sweeping wing, the overlaps of which are connected to the nose part of the fuselage. The wing consoles are trapezoidal in plan. The curved trailing edge is given over to the control surfaces and nozzles. The aircraft has a pair of keels, and they're made foldable. In some modes, they must lie in an appropriate recess on the wing. The nose of the aircraft houses the cockpit and equipment compartments. It's flanked by well-developed engine nacellas. Air intakes are brought out on the upper side of the wing and covered from below. Flat nozzles with louvered deflectors are similarly designed. The aircraft has a pair of engines of unknown type. The NGAD program report says that the aircraft may be equipped with engines designated as V1, V2, and V3. We can assume that one of the options might be a rotary detonation engine, for which active development is underway in the US and Russia. If these developments are successful, we can expect a significant increase in the fuel efficiency of the new engines. This, in turn, promises either a sharp increase in the flight time or a significant increase in the speed and altitude of the aircraft, up to 40 kilometers. This could already be considered near space, and the speed of the aircraft will come close to hypersonic. This will lead to a significant increase in overloads, in case cannot exceed 8Q. Above that, the pilot simply cannot withstand. This will lead to severe limitations on the piloting capabilities of the aircraft, so surely the sixth generation fighter jet will either have an unmanned version equipped with artificial intelligence, or the aircraft could be operated with or without a pilot. The key quality of the new aircraft is still low visibility. The design and contours of the aircraft are shaped to reduce the reflected signal. The probability of detection from the ground is reduced. An interesting solution is the folding keels. Depending on current needs, 
They can lie on the wing and reduce the EPR, or lift to the operating position, increasing the flight and maneuvering characteristics. It's difficult to assess the dimensions, mass, and flight characteristics of the presented NGAD version. Probably the aircraft of such design will not be smaller than the modern F-22 and may have a heavier mass. Accordingly, an increase in payload and operational capabilities is to be expected. Retired General James Holmes, who led the U.S. Air Force's Air Combat Command until October 2020, said in June 2021 that the NGAD could eventually include two manned aircraft. One is optimized for the European theater of operations. Presumably, it'll be of conventional size and capable of operating from a large number of temporary airfields. A larger and heavier version with a longer range and payload will be configured for a theater of operations in the Indo-Pacific region. In addition to traditional missiles, it's supposed to carry weapons of guided energy, that is, lasers. And the last thing that's known so far about the U.S. program to create a sixth-generation fighter, U.S. Air Force General Mark Kelly said this program will consist not only of the aircraft itself, but also of drones, spacecraft, and cyber platforms. All in all, Star Wars is becoming more and more of a reality. And now let's return, in our opinion, to the most interesting question about the American project of the sixth-generation fighter. Why is the Pentagon in a hurry? Maybe the U.S. military knows something that we don't. At the congressional budget hearings, General Charles Brown, chief of staff of the U.S. Air Force, said that the sixth-generation fighter should be able to go into the so-called A2AD anti-access area denial areas. This is the name given to high-risk areas in which NATO troops cannot penetrate without unacceptable damage, even with superior forces. These aircraft must penetrate any air defense system, destroying enemy aircraft and critical targets. The most advanced enemy air defense systems are Russia's famous S-400 Favorite and S-500 Prometheus. Surely the S-600 and S-700 will come later. So the U.S. military and the entire American establishment, by forcing the development of a sixth-generation fighter, show that they consider the probability of a confrontation between the United States and Russia to be quite high shortly. And the current events, when the Pentagon and NATO countries in general are transferring more and more advanced weapon systems to Ukraine for war with Russia, i.e. getting involved in this conflict themselves, show that this assessment of the near future is very realistic. But not to end our video on such a pessimistic note, let's say the last thing we learned about the American fighter aircraft under the NGAD program. A high-ranking representative of the Russian aviation industry said in a private conversation that so far there's nothing like it in Russia. We can only hope that at some secret level in our country, that is, in Russia, such a discussion is still going on. However, at the expert level, there's almost complete silence about NGAD. Except for the voicing of some very general phrases, this is a big problem. The United States is ahead of us here forever. We do not even understand what they are doing now concluded a high-ranking representative of the Russian aviation industry. So it's safe to say that, so far, the U.S. has been a confident leader in the development of the most sophisticated types of modern weapons. What's your opinion? Why do you think the U.S. is in a hurry with the sixth-generation fighter? Write about it in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like so more people can see it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel as there will be many more interesting videos about modern weapons.